Hi everyone and welcome to the Dental Podcast from Denpan. My name's Tom and I'll be your host today. If this is your first lesson, let me explain what we really do here. We're here to share clinical, informative and educational information regarding the dental industry and our business and also to allow us to pull the curtain back and show a little bit more about us in the business and who we are, what we do and how we sort of get to where we want to be. This week, I'm joined by uh, a colleague who I used to share a team with. It's Karina Shaw, who's our senior practice marketing consultant. Hi, Karina. Hi, Tom. How are you doing today? Um, yes, fine. It's a lovely day. It's lovely, Sunny. isn't it? It's yes. taking, taking a big change. Beautiful. And in my office, I can look out and I see the sun and all the cherry blossoms and everything. It's lovely. Oh, marvellous. Uh, could you, so could you sort of tell us a little about yourself and what you do here at Denplan? Yes, I've been with Denplan now for almost 10 and a half years. Um, and before that, I was the product manager for Astatech Implants. And before that, I worked for Noble Biocare also with Denplan, uh, sorry, with Implants. So my background is very much um, dental, both here and in Sweden, where, where oh. I'm from. Fantastic. Originally. So when, when did you move over from Sweden? Long time ago. I moved over around 2000. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I've been here for a long time. <laughs> well settled in now. Yeah. Well settled <laughs> in. So could you, uh, so you're, you're a senior practice marketing executive. Consultant. Uh, senior practice marketing consultant. My apologies. Could you, could you explain, you know, for the audience who may be unfamiliar, what, 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 your, what your role is? So my role is to support our member dentists and dental team with marketing advice and, and campaign planning um, and also sort of overall um, help them to grow um, and, and see, you know, try to get them to educate their teams in order for them to all work together in order to uh, attract more patients and then obviously mainly them plan patients fantastic so uh, that that is what i'm what i'm there for oh great so when you have these meetings could you could you sort of talk me through a typical meeting about sort of how it would go how somebody would sort of get in contact with you and how we'd go from there yeah so it's normally it's the practice own dem plan consultant who will uh, contact me because they have then discussed with the practice and they they know that the, the practice want to grow. It might be that they want to attract more patients or it might be that they're losing patients. So they need help with retention. Um, and what happened then is that we order a something called an ACON patient profiling report. It's a, a, a big report, a geodemographic, a big company called CACI is what we're using. So anyone with any business could order one of these, but it's worth quite a lot of money but that is included as part of our uh, team um, members um, membership so I will get that uh, I will sort of see what kind of patients do they have how what kind of potential patients are they in the local area uh, and from that I, I obviously get as much information as possible from the consultant I then write down quite a comprehensive initial marketing ideas uh, document and once at the practice I normally see the principal dentist practice manager sometimes they might have um, an associate there as well together with our consultant and I normally start with asking you know obviously what they like to achieve with the practice uh, have they done any marketing before and if so how did it go uh, and then I will start with going through the ACO report to explain because it's quite a comprehensive report to get them to understand um, how they can use it, what kind of potential um, patients do they have in the area. Uh, and then I will go start going through my initial ideas document. So I don't go through all of it, but I discuss what I think would be most useful for them to do. Um, for example, they might want to, uh, they have quite aging them plan, um, patient list and they would like to um, attract uh, younger professionals. Sometimes they're lucky because in the ACON report I can see they are quite a lot of, of the younger professionals in there. 
However, sometimes if I am in Turkey, that might not be the the the, the same way, and, and then like it kind of it's nothing we can do because there is a more retired area down there. So we go through then what particular would attract that kind of target group. So that's what I normally what we do with the meeting. That's amazing. So it's and this is all covered within Den Plan itself as well, isn't it? It's, it you know, is without getting too salesy. Uh, this, is, this is something that we can we cover, and it's a fairly unique to us as well, from my belief. It is very unique, and and obviously, if they pay for a consultant to come out as someone like me, they they would pay quite quite a lot of money. Uh, if, if some if they're not on them plan, and the meetings sort of I try to keep them for two hours. If the dentist can take out two hours, it's brilliant. Sometimes they take out less, and then they realize that it's too interesting. They need some more time. And, and they went, yeah, exactly. Because once you know, it's quite comprehensive, so it it, it will take time. Yeah. Um, and then uh, after the meeting, obviously I take notes what we discussed, and I would then write a follow up report. Yeah. Uh, what we particular discussed, and then I will write in red what kind of information I need from the dentist, should he or she like me to go ahead with the various things we have sure. discussed. Okay, great. So obviously, like elephant in the room, with with what's happened with COVID over the last eighteen months, that's obviously going to have had a, that's had a huge, huge effect on our practices and all dental practices across the country, but. But how has that affected how you would work? Because, I mean, obviously you can't, you can no, could no longer go into practices. So that's definitely going to have a fairly dramatic shift in your work. It did. It did. What we did was we still did the, the ACO report and my initial ideas. Mm. Then I have to send everything to our print room. They have to send it out, well, copy to me, copy to consultant and to the practice. And then what we did was to book... Um, virtual meetings okay uh and that is uh well it's face-to-face meetings uh, are amazing video meetings not so um <laughs> it's it's very difficult because um the dentist that might have oops those documents or oh, oh, sorry i left them at home so then that is how so i have to try to see if i can share my screen which is never ideal because i can't really see them when I'm sharing and I need to, I need to, you know, we all need to have that kind of response and things like that. Um, and they maybe not have access to a proper, they might just have their mobile phone and they put it somewhere in the practice and you saw part of them. Uh, and uh, the, the video, the, the sound was not amazing. You always have this, you know, slight delay yeah, and sometimes the picture froze, so it, it was a challenge. It really was a challenge, but um, uh, I've had a lot of positive response. At least they they thought it was a benefit for them. Well, I was I was going to say the same thing. You know, I work in comms, and we understand that. You know, we've had a lot of positive feedback as well. Understanding that people are are enjoying the fact that they can still communicate with us, and it means a lot to sort of maintain that relationship because it can't be easy as much as a lot of us have been struggling at Den Plan, we all work from home now. And uh, as you can see, I'm not in an office, uh, but it's, it's the way the world works now, but have, I think having that connection has been really, really important to some people, especially within a practice environment where they might have gone from seeing dozens of people a day to, to none. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously our Den Plan practices are extremely uh, grateful because these patients have kept them going mm. because with the monthly payments they do and uh, so they have they really appreciated that they had the patient uh, them plan list um, but uh, when they started again there was a lot of things they, they they needed help with they obviously needed to they have a backlog of, of patients but it was also an opportunity for them to to attract new patients, um, because uh, especially as we saw NHS patients have problems to access a, a, the practice because there was such a backlog and be, uh, our practices were able to, to offer uh, our maintenance plan essentials, which was sort of affordable. So we could help to promote that for our member practices mm. and that had worked really well. 
No, oh, fantastic. No, it's, it's, it's good to hear that that's, it's hearing it from different sides and very much internally based. So I'll hear things from one way and not the other, but it's good knowing that sort of on the cold face, so to speak, you're still getting that positive feedback and uh, knowing that the, the patients are being helped as much as the practices. Yeah. And um, what I saw that, that, that what worked the best was the practices who actually communicated with the patients during the lockdown Yeah, the, to use the social media platforms to, to, to just have short videos where friendly videos, you know, from maybe from the hygienist, from the nurses, just to say, hello, we really miss you. Are we still here? Just give us a ring. Um, and they came up with a little um, session in how could I, the patient take care of the teeth yeah. during the lockdown, you know, make sure you do floss and you brush. And uh, that that's, they have been very successful, those practices, because patients felt really worried. They didn't know if they were there and, you know, can we call you? So I really encourage them to do that and, and to have maybe Zoom meetings with the patients, you know, just for the patients to talk to them, to see them. Yeah, that's, that's going to be assuring as well. Yeah, absolutely. So going back to more about your role rather than the, the, the epidemic, or the pandemic that's happened. So what is it that you sort of find most rewarding about your role? It is to to um, to go out to see the practices, to be able to um, to support them with with you know with everything, with the marketing, the campaigns, yeah. and and see the, the appreciation of it. I absolutely love it, and uh, being because I'm all over the country, I see so many teams and so different teams from little maybe single. Um, surgeries to big fancy uh, clinics and it's 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 I really appreciate that and um, and afterwards when they they found it really really useful that is yeah. such a reward I must say oh, so perfect I suggest uh, all the marketing after our meetings quite a lot of work come back to me because they they like and if they like almost everything I said then it's a lot of work coming back uh, which I then brief into our design studio yeah. Uh, to help them, you know, everything from uh, social media posts to it could be flyers or posters. Also, our Simply Select platform as well, which is uh, not one thing to ever be sort of sniffed at either. No, that is really good. And as I said, our um, colleague Hannah has done a really great job with that and it's so much easier to 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 use it it's very clearly labeled different kind of I wrote quite a lot of booklets during the first lockdown when I couldn't do anything and we have uploaded those onto that as well so practices can just download them everything from TikTok and Instagram stories social media for uh, then to practices to marketing for different generations i've written a lot of these so it's it's oh, really helpful so i hope practices take advantage and and download them and absolutely and it's such fantastic stuff as well that we've you know i used to work in the practice marketing team so i used to make the sort of the materials for simply select and yeah. used to help out with the practices as well but we've gone on we've come so far since then and it's uh, it's so amazing to sort of see this stuff change from one year to the next, and or from two years yeah. to the next, even. But sort of saying about how the sort of things have got, where we've come from and where we've been. Where do you see things changing in the future for sort of dentistry? Do you think there is going to be a sort of a, ch a change to how things work now that sort of COVID has moved on, or sort of the operating procedures into sort of the business operating procedure, should I say, is, do you think there would be a big, big change there? I think they, they always had a very good system in place. And I think what they are probably going to keep is this, um, the air cleaners, you know, yeah. the, the, these days take down, there used to be an hour. They have to wait between patients. Many practices now are down to 10 minutes. Oh, amazing. And I think that that will continue. They always been very clean in, in practices. Masks have always been used. So that is, uh, and gloves. But hopefully um, they can get rid of the, you know, the, the huge kind of uh, things they have to do. Well, yeah. So if they can remove those things and uh, they probably think a bit how they operate, how they kind of, maybe how they change the waiting room, maybe just have a, 
slightly more, you know, social distancing just to make 100% sure. But I, I think it, it all, all of them are uh, vaccinated, by the way, yeah. practices uh, and more of, of us, of course, going almost towards 40 million now, isn't it? It's I've amazing. had my first, so I'm, uh, yeah, I'm very lucky. Me too. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so grateful and lucky and uh, I have a second one in June. Same, so same. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I was very, very fortunate. So um, I got mine quite early. So yeah. Um, but sort of to sort of not so much tidy things up, but you know, what the favorite, what was your favorite thing that you've ever worked on? Is there anything that stands out or is it, or is there a sort of a type or something that's really, really stood out for you in your career? Um, or in, in my career, oh, career, well, career at Demplan, shall we say? <laughs> oh, Dem, yeah, Demplan, because I would say one thing that was I did a, a a presentation on a big uh, champion event a couple of years ago and I talked about you know how to plan campaigns and everything and in the end we did kind of a, a competition so of all the teams that if they wanted to join the, the one that created the best campaign would uh, would win 100 pounds uh, uh, love to shop vouchers and the practice who wore was amazing. She, she loved everything I did, everything I said. She followed everything. She filled in because I've done kind of, um, you know, how to, what do you want to achieve? And, you know, the, the target group and timeline, you know, everything like that. She used those templates and she filled in everything. And they gave themselves a two months to um, attract 30 new Demplan patients. Mm. Uh, and we did lots of things. She, she she contacted. She had social media. She did promotion in the practice. She contacted estate agents. Uh, l- loads of things. And the principal dentist supported them as well and said, for every dental patient you sign up, we give five pounds oh, wow. uh, towards the pot. And in the end, they managed to actually um, attract sixty-two new patients so oh fantastic du- double what they they wanted yeah and uh, so it was amazing so me and their, con- their consultant julie went to them and um, gave them all this the vouchers and we, we bought a uh, bottle of champagne and julie has been there during the time as well to you know encourage them and pop them in some cakes or you know and that was amazing and when i spoke to the practice manager she said you know what why it was such a success was that everyone was involved the whole team worked together and that is just proof which I always said you know if you work together then it works but you can't you can't have you know some people not being involved no so I would say that is probably one of the things that really really stood out no, I completely agree. That sounds fantastic. And such it's always good to hear sort of the a, a victory story as well. Cause yeah, especially when you put in the, the amount of work and you were saying Julie as well. So yeah, everybody coming exactly. together. So the rising tide lifts all ships. And like I, I like to say, is uh if everyone's in yeah. this together, we all rise together. So yeah, I think it's really important, especially during these times as well. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. Well, I'm so pleased. I'm so happy to be out again. It's, oh no i'm so glad I can't, I, can't imagine, energy. I can't imagine the difference in how it's sort of worked from before and until now i mean i've very always been an office-based person so going from an office office to a home office hasn't been yeah. a, a dramatic shift but it's been it's been tough at times but i can uh yeah. i can only imagine the difference between being on the road and and <laughs> and being at home all the time the only the positive thing was that i managed to write all these booklets which I wanted to do for for a few years but the, there was no time because no obviously it's a lot of research and everything so that I'm very happy with so at least that is some something that was good yeah that's great well if everyone can find you on TikTok I presume now and uh, I think yeah. you'll be an expert <laughs> yeah my 14 year old she tried to get me I'm forced to do some TikTok with hers uh, as well <laughs> So uh, she said, I can do it, we can do this. This is not, it's not hard. It's not so fast. So you can do it. Oh, yeah. It's um, it's, it's quite fun, actually. Oh, perfect. Well, thanks, Karina. And thank you for sort of taking the time to talk to us today. And, you know, just for everybody back home, this is, 
uh, something that we're going to be we're going to be doing a bit more of these, sort of shining a spotlight on some of our uh, fantastic team and some of our staff. So, uh, yeah, I'm delighted to introduce Karina or reintroduce Karina as the second in our spotlight series following from events. And uh, if you need any help, how can they how can how can practices get in contact with you, Karina, if, if they'd like to? The best thing is to contact their own dem plan consultant sure. and talk to them first and see what, what, the, what they want to achieve and what they want to do. And then they will contact me. Brilliant. Well, thanks again, Karina. And uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.